Welcome to Watch Symposium. I'm Austin. All right, so let's talk about some random thoughts on the new Rolex certified pre-owned program, the CPO program that they've just rolled out this month across Europe and spring of 2023. It's going to be in other authorized dealers if they want to participate in it. It's not mandatory. It's just uh, a way for the authorized dealers to get into the gray market. And it's a way for you to more safely buy pre-owned pieces. And that's the thing. If you watch my channel and you're a watch guy and you're a Rolex guy, and you probably are if you're watching my channel, you know your watches, you know your Rolex watches, you know what a 14060 should look like, you know what a 16710 should look like, you know the configurations you're looking for, you know if parts, bezel inserts, bracelets, clasps have been changed out or not. And it's not something you need to worry about, probably, all right? But this program is for people new to watches. You know, when I got into watches, 2013 and I was looking for my first Rolex a 14060 it was tough I mean you know I wanted a pre-owned watch I wanted let me rephrase that I wanted a five digit but uh, they weren't selling them at the AD so I had to go pre-owned I had to go gray market and it takes a lot of education right because a lot of funny things can happen and part switched out and Franken watches and stolen watches. We'll get to that. And so it was difficult. It was sort of trial by fire and it worked out for me, but it doesn't work out for a lot of people. And this is a program that's just going to allow people to rest assured they're getting a Rolex with all Rolex parts. And the number one thing is not going to be stolen. They're going to run the number when they service the watch. All right. Now this is a big, big thing because when I bought my 14060, it was no box, no papers. And so I was on pins and needles when I had it serviced because if it had been stolen, Rolex would have confiscated it, all right? And that's what they do. Only they have access to the stolen watch registry, all right? And this has always been something that has, well, disturbed me. Uh, when it comes to buying pre-owned watches because you don't know until you take it to RSC to have some work done on it. You know, have your bezel insert changed out, have uh, your bracelet adjusted. They'll run the number and if they give you back your watch, it should be fine. Now, they definitely run the numbers when you have it overhauled, but do they always run the number? If you're doing something like, you know, just inquiring about your watch or having the bracelet adjusted, here in Japan, I'm pretty sure they would run the number, right? But I'm not sure that they always do that. So anyway, whenever I get a watch back from an overhaul, not only am I happy to have it checked out, but I'm happy to know that it really is my watch and that it's not stolen. And that is the biggest risk when it comes to buying pre-owned. And look, Paul Thorpe, I'll put a link in the description if I can find his video, but he sold a watch and then uh, something happened and, and I, I guess it wasn't paid for or it was paid for by like a bum credit card or something. I, I don't know the details of it, but it was reported stolen. He reported it stolen. Anyway, it turned up, I want to say, I think it was Italy at an RSC. It was flagged and they contacted him. Now, it didn't really work out because he wasn't able to get it back and, and eventually he just gave up on it. And so I guess the guy that took it to the RSC was able to get it back. But you know, if you if you buy a watch from the gray market, you know, pre-owned dealer, you really need to have it overhauled. But a lot of the times they are serviced before they're sold. And so and this is something that people who aren't watch people, they're not really going to think about it. They're going to think, well, hey, it's running great and they're going to wear it for five or six or seven years. And when and if they ever do take it to RSC and it's flagged, you know, they could very well lose their watch. Now, this happened to a friend of mine here in Tokyo, and if you're curious what happens, they wait till everybody leaves the store, they lock the door, they close the shades and break it to you that your watch is stolen. So if you're at an RSC in Japan and you know, you're sitting there and you're the only one and the shades start coming down, it's bad news, okay? So anyway, only Rolex has this information of the stolen watches, only they can tell you only they can know if these watches are stolen. So when you buy a watch off eBay, that's no box, no papers. I mean, good luck trying to get your money back 
if it turns out to be stolen. If it's a brick and mortar shop, that's gonna be a lot easier. But again, the longer you wait, the more chances that business has to close its doors or change locations or perhaps management changes or them to forget about you. So be careful, obviously, but this program is really gonna alleviate that worry. So again, if you're a non-watch person and you just want a watch that you know has been checked out by Rolex themselves and is not stolen, then this could be something that really works for you. For me, I will continue to patronize the gray market and the pawn shops and take my pieces to RSC right after I get them to make sure that uh, they're not stolen. And I usually tend to have them serviced no matter what after the fact because it cleans off all the previous owner's DNA. I get to have the watch checked out, of course. I get all the papers, the service papers, and uh, it just makes me feel like it's my watch now. And I know it's my watch because the uh, number has been run through their internal database of stolen watches. So that's probably the biggest plus of the program. And it's something that really no gray market uh, can provide. They cannot provide that information they don't have access to that database. So there's the advantage of the CPO program. Again, it's not for me. It might be for more of the newbie people out there. Let me know what you think. Take care. Thanks for watching. See you next time. All right, guys. So they've got that premium kind that they had. Um, I had this on camera. And then they have this. I've never seen this before, but this guy was, um, well, he was a TV personality and he died not too long ago from COVID. And so this must be sort of a, maybe a tribute to him. Very interesting. All right. And then of course you got the big boys here for, uh, wow, look at that. That'll uh, get you buzz right there. Yeah, 300 milliliters. This is uh, no joke stuff. And then got some Ume shoe here, different types of Ume. Uh, not Ume, but um, Oni Koroshi, the uh, demon killer. And some other stuff right here. And uh, got uh, some more, I guess this is rice wine, yeah, so sake. Anyway, 